already models have you downloaded? How much code have you copied from GitHub? How many gerbers have you designed in KiCad? All of these things and about half of the modern world are a product of open source. In this chapter of the Zero to Maker workshop, we're looking at licenses. Whoa, 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 don't click off yet. I promise we're gonna make it interesting. We're gonna keep it fun and in the context of maker projects. It's also really important for you to know and you only need to learn it once. That's it. If you're new to this workshop, we'll be taking you on a fast paced and practical journey to learn a wide variety of maker skills and pseudo legal advice so that you have the tools and knowledge to make anything. A quick disclaimer, Gordon doesn't, doesn't do legal, legal advice. As a part of our fabricating experience, we haven't looked into intellectual property and licenses. If you want bulletproof legal wizardry and, and to know your rights around each license, talk to a lawyer. This message was approved by Luke Piano. What is a license? Simply put, a license is a blanket agreement that you make with the community that defines the scope and terms with which anyone is able to use or distribute or modify your work. In the case of an open license, it's a way to ensure that your project is accessible to the maker community without needing to approve every individual use. And this license will answer user questions such as, can they copy bits and pieces of it? Can they make changes and distribute it? And can they use it in their commercial ventures and projects? Why does this matter? Why don't we just whack my project on the internet, dust my hands off and say jobs done? Well, a license not only protects and benefits you, but the people that want to make use of your work also benefit. For example, if a school or a teacher comes across your work and goes, wow, this is really amazing. I want to use this in the classroom. If there is no clear license attached to it saying how they can use it, chances are they might not use it because it might be ambiguous whether they can legally use it or not. But if you clearly display your license, which clearly states the allowable uses of your work, there isn't risk there and they're more likely to use it. And you probably have been in a similar situation without knowing it. If you're on thingy or Maker World or Thangs looking for 3D models, you'll find licenses attached to everything saying how you can use it. The same goes for code on GitHub. Images on the web, most things being distributed on the internet have these licenses that inform you how you can use them. So licenses are beneficial for your work and for protecting and informing the people that want to use your work. Now, thankfully, you don't need to be a lawyer to attach a license to your maker project. The hard work has already been done before. You can find many pre-written and freely available licenses that you can use on your project. And there are tons of options. You will come across the MIT license, range of Creative Commons licenses, and GNU licenses. There are a whole heap of different licenses with different requirements. Some make your project free game for anyone to use. Some make it so people must credit you and some restrict people from making money off your work. So let's look at a few ways to pick one. First up, and just like in school, you can copy or be inspired by someone else. There are almost half a billion GitHub repos that are licensed in one way or another. Open up your favorite repo or project and you'll be able to find the license and a nice little summary of what that license allows. And you can just find a license you like that aligns with your values and apply it to your work. And that's actually what we did here at Core Electronics. We design and manufacture maker hardware. We looked at other maker companies who are making stuff and took inspiration from the licenses they were using with their hardware. We liked how they were on the open hardware movement and we wanted to jump on that train. Not only has the hard work been done in writing the licenses, but also in helping you select the licenses. You can find lots of online resources to help you choose one. Creative Commons, which is a massive major license organization, has a beautiful and easy to follow quiz where you answer questions about what you want and it spits out the right license for you. And you'll find similar quizzes for other types of licenses. These quizzes are a great option in finding a license and it's actually what I did for my Fab Academy project. I wanted a license that lets users access and use my work for commercial purposes if they want, but the only catch is that they must give credit and I just used the online quiz to find the correct license for me. And we'll have links in the course page to these quizzes if you want to select your own one. Now before we finish there are some important things when it comes to licenses that we should probably touch on. First of all, read your license. If you find one you like, give it a good read all the way through. They aren't too long and it means you're doing your due diligence. There are also catches to be wary of with licenses. For example, like my project, you must give attribution or credit to the creator in some form or another. One to really watch out for is copy left licenses. This means that all derivative work or any work that builds upon yours must use the same license. If you use a library or design that has a copyleft license, 
and you go to license your project, it kinda has to use the same license. And the GNU license has this copyleft system, and as a result, it has infected a huge amount of work. We don't mean this in a negative sense, it's just kind of spread because of how the license work. It may be annoying how this copyleft system works, but it helps to ensure that derivative works remain open access. Now we've been mentioning the word open a lot so far, and we've actually been referencing something called open source. Now open source was coined in the software engineering world and the idea is that the source code of files are made to be accessible, modifiable and shareable. Linux is open source and because people can freely use it, modify it and peer inside the source code itself, so many improvements, bugs and security issues have been fixed. Software like Blender and KCAD are huge projects that have become industry standards because they are open source. People can freely adopt and modify it to their needs and because it is open source it has gained a huge community. If you can, open source it. It helps the global community and the benefits are definitely there. Final thing, be aware that many licenses can be non-commercial, meaning that other people can't use your work to make money. Really simple one, you may or may not want this for your project, but just be aware that it's an option. And that's licensing your maker projects 101. We hope this video sheds some light on the less interesting parts of wrapping up your project, but gave it the justice it needs. Video adjourned. Till next time.